Majority of the rural households in Kenya's 47 counties struggle to access safe drinking water. Thousands of women, girls and even men spend inordinate amount of time searching for the precious commodity. This hinders economic and social progress, leading to a huge pull-down in national growth. Both local and international scientists have raised a red flag over the current human growth, coupled with the excessive exploitation of the natural resource within the core areas of the Mara River Basin. As a result, people living along the Mara River and its basin are increasingly facing water shortage, poor water quality and environmental degradation. Up till this year, we haven't really been affected too much, except we've got very near uh, the bottom. But this year, in, in uh, February, March, when there was no rain, and there should have been rain here, um, we, were, we were asked to stop irrigating. and We had to stop irrigating our beans and our barley and even our avocados, we had to stop. So that's the first time we've had that. The four-year Mau Mara Serengeti Sustainable Water Initiative Mamase along the Mara River was formed in 2014. The focus of the project is to rehabilitate the Mara River Basin. Our approach is to uh, set up demonstration sites that uh, serve as examples of some of the technologies and the uh, approaches, the innovations in agriculture that the program is bringing in, and then to expose a much larger number of farmers to the activities inside of those demonstration sites. According to Professor Michael McLean, the Mamase team leader, introducing products through existing systems is the only way the project will succeed. New approaches, in some cases entirely new products that are water-wise, that uh, improve water safety and security in the basin, but are also uh, economically viable. We know that we will not be successful unless we introduce products through existing systems such as farm cooperatives and also products that are going to be economically successful. The introduction of using Android phones to send water-related data to a central website has made work easier. Tomkins Odo, the sub-regional manager for the Marasodu Water Resources Management Authority, says they are now able to get accurate and up-to-date data. Initially, they used to do it manually on papers with mistakes, but now they are using the Android phones and then just send data direct to our office. That means it's quality data. They can't lie. You see, you're able to get monthly data in terms of quality and quantity, as I'm saying. And also with the Mamase, we've been able to advance in technology. Like what you're seeing over there, there's a, a river sensor, water level river sensor. So when the water goes up, it, it sends and then sends data to the cloud. And there's a website you can down, download and just see how the river is behaving in terms of height. Farmers in the region have been introduced to agroforestry. This requires each and every one of them to plant trees within their farms. All these forests that were here when I first came here have all gone now. And it's charcoal, charcoal, charcoal every day. So if there's a, an answer to that, if they can find us another income that these people can make without going to charcoal. Charcoal is not a bad thing in itself if you're replanting. And that's what we're trying to show them with the agroforestry project we've got, is that you can actually grow your charcoal. The way that we're supporting is working around the periphery of the forest and working with communities and, and looking at ways of introducing uh, income generating activities that are non-forest related and hoping to therefore reduce some of the pressure that the forest experiences. According to Hugo Wood of the Mara Farming Farm, they will be looking for effective ways of farming to minimize the use of water from the Mara River. Uh, there's, uh, for our trees, we're looking at um, these, these little um, uh, spray nozzles that you put at the bottom of the tree. So each tree gets its own water supply and it's not thrown everywhere. And then for this, uh, things like this passion fruit, we're, we're looking at uh, drip, drip irrigation, which is 30% of what a, what a pivot uses, you know, to do the same thing. So, so I think pivots at the end of the day probably will have to go out and we'll, we'll move on to the more efficient ways of using water. Farmers and the communities in these areas are optimistic that the data produced from the project 
will help improve the situation and support in the process of structural change. Marietta Salvin, GBS News.